wave at them and tell them it's so good for you to be here. Amen. We we'll pray for those that can't be here this morning and we greet them online in the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated today. Amen. God is good. Yes. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. God bless the worship team. Thank you this morning for wonderful worship. And we want to thank the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy. Hallelujah. Let's get right into the word of the Lord this morning. I want to thank those that are fasting and praying. Amen. Amen. We got one more week. We're right in the, we've just done two weeks of fasting and praying. And I know it's easy to give up and say, okay, I've done enough. But you got to just push a little bit more. All right. And if you haven't joined our fast, join our fast. Amen. Still another I think it's seven days left or six days. We're going to finish up Saturday night uh, with the help of the Lord and uh, come in on Sunday morning refreshed and in Jesus' name. Amen. I've got a word from the Lord this morning. I've got a word from the Lord this Thank morning. You, go, go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 4. Uh, the Lord has really been ministering to me through this, uh, this uh, verse. And I believe uh, it's a word from the Lord. Then was Jesus led up in the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. All right. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he after he was afterward was hungry. Uh -huh. yeah. And when the tempter came to him and said, if you be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Uh -huh. And he answered and said, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. The devil then took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you really are the son of God, cast yourself down then, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt uh, dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answered him and said, it's written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. And in verse 8, and again the devil taking them up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto thee, all these I'll give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus, get thee hence, Satan, yes. for it is written, yes. thou shalt worship the Lord your God and, with, and him only shall you serve. Amen. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered unto yes. him. Father, for the next few moments, I just pray you give me a word, a timely word. We need to hear from you this morning, and we ask in, in the name of Jesus. What an interesting scripture we just read this morning, but it's for our benefit. Yes, it is. Let's look at verse 1. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of, the, of God, of the devil. The Bible says, uh, you know, this, this is not the first battle between Jesus and and the devil. We know that this happened in eternity past. That's right. Up in heaven when Lucifer rebelled against the throne of God. In fact, Jesus says in Luke 10, 18 of this great battle, he says, he said, and I saw and I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, the Bible says. In other words, when he began to rebel against the throne of God with a tail, he swept a third of heaven with him. Trying to rebel against God. God dethroned him from heaven as a lightning bolt to the earth. Ever since that, there's been a battle against everything. He's been battling against everything that is God. That's you and I included this morning. And in Matthew 4, the Bible says, Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. By the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. In this situation, he's been fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights. And the scripture says he was hungry. That means uh, Jesus, the man, was vulnerable. He is weak. He's been fasting for 40 days. But nevertheless, the Spirit of God leads him into a wilderness. Yes. You must understand that everything that the church goes through, the church belongs to the Lord. Amen. The church is his body. Amen. So wherever we, whatever happens in church life, the spirit of God is leading us. Yes. Right. No matter what's going on, the spirit of God. If you are part of the body of Christ, 
the Spirit of God will lead us. Sometimes it will lead us into the wilderness, Amen. a barren place. Hallelujah. And the role of the church during this time, and when we're just being sensitive to the Spirit of God, is to be seeking the presence of the Lord, yes. fasting, seeking God. We don't understand what's going on, but we just we just lean toward God. Amen. Jesus is, is in a very vulnerable position. But God is orchestrating his steps. He's being led by the Spirit. And the devil begins to attack him and to tempt him. You and I is the same situation, the same scenario. You know, if you are following after the Lord, there are going to come times. And especially this beginning of this year, we never imagined us such an incredible wilderness, such a loneliness, such a trial that we're going through. Nevertheless, God's presence is with us. Praise God. Amen. And it is during that time that uh, the devil, the Bible says, came to the Lord. Amen. Verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Uh, as Jesus is there, the enemy comes and questions him. Uh -huh. Actually, to question God. Right. And the first thing that you're going to realize when you're going through a trial and the enemy is involved, he's going to make you question. That's right. In other words, the first attack is to plant a seed of doubt. Right. Did God really say this? He even said that in the Garden of yes, Eden. Yes, when Adam and Eve were there, did God really say you shouldn't right, eat of this? Uh -huh. Here, he's asking Jesus, uh, if you are really who you say you are, I want you to command uh, these stones to be made bread. He's attacking the sovereignty and the will of God. His role is to cause doubt to yourself and to cause doubt about the will of God, who you are. Right. Am I really doing? What are you doing, Jesus, out here in the wilderness, fasting 40 days and 40 nights? Do you think this is the plan of God? You should... This is not the plan of God for you to suffer, for you to go through such situations, through such struggles. It's not the plan of God. You should just do what you know if you're really who you are. Command these stones and make them bread and feed yourself. Just, just rebel. Just, he, he wants us to fail because he, he failed. Right. You know, just go ahead and, and command these stones uh, uh, to just, uh, you know, you have the authority why do you need to be fasting? Why do you need to be sacrificing? Why do you need to be struggling? You can just get up and go and do your own thing. Why do you need to? Right. Just command these, these stones to be turned to bread. That's his plan. That's right. If he can cause you to, this is not where you need to be. You shouldn't be here. Come you on. shouldn't be going in this situation. Now. now remember, it is the Spirit of God yes. that is leading the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. You must remember that. Amen. And Jesus, when he's going through that, you know, because in the Old Testament, Jesus, the devil is using the, the ploy of the Old Testament because in the Old Testament, True. God God gave them bread. God gave them manna. God gave them water. Right. His plan is for us not to trust God. That's right. His plan is for us to act on our own desires and our own will. That's right. Just don't trust him. Don't trust him. That's you know, just, just you know, you've got to just take care of yourself because uh -huh. if you don't take care of yourself, no one else is going to take care of you. Right. You've got to just take care of this situation. Put it in your own hands. You know, you, you, God, look at what's going on. Right. If he can cause doubt in your life, uh -huh. but I like the way the Lord answered him. Yes. Jesus used the text in Deuteronomy eight four. He said, right. but he answered him and said, it's written, yes. man shall not live by bread alone. Oh, no. But by every word that proceeded yeah. out of the mouth of God. Yes. This text is really powerful because it is when the children of Israel came out of Egypt into a barren desert. They had no resources. But God's perfect care took care of them while they journeyed in the wilderness. Yes. How Amen. God would take care of them. It was not the bread that would sustain them. It was the hand, powerful, mighty hand of God that was sustaining them. It was His power. It was every word that was coming out of the mouth of God. That God will not fail me, praise God. God will not forsake me. I will continue trusting God. He is the source of my life. He is the one that controls my life. Not the devil. Not bread. Not my own self, but God this morning.
morning. Hallelujah. So I will seek him first. That's not, bread is not going to satisfy or take care of me. It is God that will take care of me. And church this morning, it is God that will take care of us. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Don't take things on your own hands. Trust him. Trust him. Don't doubt God. Don't ever doubt God. Yes, That's the seed of the devil trying to put doubt in your life. Trying to make you disbelief that's not going to happen. But God is saying here, you cannot live by that way. You cannot live by your own resources. You've got to live by every word that comes out of my mouth. Praise God. I like the way the writer in the book of Jude says. In Jude, there's only one chapter. In verse 20, he says, but ye beloved... You got to build yourself up in the most holy faith. Yes. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to believe who sustains you, who keeps you. And you got to keep yourself in the love of God. You got to keep looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And during this journey, even though the situation might get rough, and even though the devil may be wanting to plant seeds of doubt in you, on some you've got to continue having compassion. On some you've got to continue making a difference. On others, in verse 23, you got to save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. And now on to him. Look at what it says in verse 24. Now on to him that is able to keep you from falling. He will sustain you, praise God. And he will present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding the joy. To him be all the glory, hallelujah. And the majesty and dominion forever and ever. God is the one that will sustain us. Yes, amen. That's right. Amen. So then the devil goes, okay, if God will sustain you, verse 5, go back to Matthew 4, 5. Then the devil took him to the holy city uh -huh. and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Yes. And he said unto him, if you really are the son of God, and if God really will take care of you then, uh -huh. as you say he will, uh -huh. cast yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, right. and their hands, and they shall not and they shall bear thee up, lest at any time you shall dash your foot. Okay, so the devil goes, okay, so you, be you believe that he'll take care of you. Well, let's just put the Lord to the test. You know, that, so he takes him to this to Jerusalem. Yes. And there is a temple. A, there's a pinnacle or a tower there that's about 450 feet during this time. It oversaw the the valley of J Jerusalem. It was a very crowded place. In fact, tradition says that James, the brother of the Lord, was cast off of this temple, this pinnacle, and he died. That's how James died. He died a martyr. They threw him off. They believed they threw him off of this very same tower. And as he's there, the devil is saying, if you are the son of God, you should not suffer. Throw yourself off in front of all the people to see that the angels got to catch you and you just land softly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We, we want to see a sign, Jesus. Uh-huh. You see, there's some people that didn't need to see a sign. I need to see a sign, God, that you're with, really with me. You need to do this, Lord. God doesn't need to do anything. That's right. Amen. That's right. God just wants you to trust and believe, though I don't see him. Like what you're seeing, even though I don't see him, I know he's working, praise God. Amen. I don't need a sign to trust God this morning. Amen. And I will not put the Lord our God to a test. Hallelujah. There are some people this morning that want to make a bargain with God. Well, God, if you do this, then I'll do that. God, if you save me my this, then I'll do that. Be careful. Don't be tempting the Lord. Amen. Yeah, we know in our humanity, in our desperation, we want to make pledges and promises to God. But let's understand, I've, I've walked with the Lord long enough that God is sovereign. God will do what He's going to do. Praise God. But we can still ask for mercy and compassion. But I will not, I will not put the Lord to a test. Amen. I will not presume that God is going to do this. God doesn't have to do that. And He wants you to, to, to test the Lord. To presume that the Lord will do that. To give you a sign. But Jesus said... To him, we don't need a sign from God to trust him. That's right. Jesus said unto him in verse 7, It's written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Yes. Yes. He responded from Deuteronomy 6.16. Uh -huh. uh, in this verse, 
He was telling the people that are now in the promised land not to behave like their fathers who grumbled when they were in the desert and they had no water. They had come out uh, when they came out of Egypt and they reached a place where there was no water and there was no food and, and then they were just grumbling to Moses. And well, did God really do that? You, you got to feed us, God. And, and they grumbled and they complained. And like if God had abandoned them, but I'm here to tell you that even though you don't see it, even though you don't feel it, God is still faithful and he will never. I don't need a sign to believe him. This morning, as I was rehearsing and praying over this verse, the Lord took me. To when Thomas and the disciples, uh, yes. after the resurrection, uh, yes. the disciples told Thomas, because he wasn't present when the Lord appeared to them. And they told Thomas, Thomas, uh, uh, we saw the Lord. And um, Thomas gets a bad hand on this because uh, he tells the disciples, if I don't see his hands, uh -huh. and if I don't see his side, I'm not going to believe. Why did Thomas? Because it was so traumatic to Thomas. He was there probably amongst the crowd when the Lord of glory was carrying the cross, a bloody body, a beaten body. He probably from afar off saw when that soldier pierced his side. And when he, when he literally said it is consumed, it is finished. And he gave up the spirit and he, and he literally died. That trauma on Thomas uh, was just so impactful that when uh, they told him the Lord resurrected, he says, I, I can't, unless I see it with my own eyes, I, I, I cannot believe it. It's just too much. And But the Lord all of a sudden appeared to him and said, Thomas, uh, uh, come here. And he said, uh, put your finger here in my hand and look at my side. And he said, my Lord, my God. But Jesus Jesus said this, uh, Thomas, you believe because you've seen, but there's going to, but blessed are those that believe and they've never seen my scars. They've never seen my side, but yet they believe. Hallelujah. 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 I believe the Lord. Amen. I believe the Lord. Yes. That God is faithful. Yes, he is. And I believe in his word this morning. I don't need a sign. Amen. I don't need a sign to trust him. Hallelujah. I don't need that, you know, because if you go off of signs, you're going to be really hurt. You're going to be really confused. You're going to doubt. The enemy will take advantage. And that's what happened to Thomas. In fact, we cannot lose sight of our faith. Yes, Lord. Jesus literally told Peter right up at the very evening, in Luke 22 and 31, he said, Simon, Satan has desire to have you yes. to sift you as wheat. Right. You better prepare, Simon, because there's going to come things that you're going to see that's going to really make you doubt. But I pray for you Hallelujah. that in the midst of that, your faith will not fail you. And when you are converted, I want you to strengthen the brethren. Hallelujah. Amen. So every situation that the church goes through and our faith is affirmed, it is for a purpose to be a blessing to other people, praise God. Don't lose your faith, Peter. I have faith in you, Peter. After you come out of the test, I want you to you use your experience to help and to bless others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That God is faithful even though we don't see it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Job is a perfect example of that, but at the time does not allow me to go in there then. He said, though he, though he slay me, yes. yet I believe in him. I know my Redeemer liveth. Amen. Though he slay me, Job said, uh, he was going through all kinds of hell in his life, losing his finances, losing his children, his, his health and all. Then he said, uh, give me a pen uh, somewhere uh, and let me write it on stone. Uh, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Though he slay me, yet with these eyes I shall see him again. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. I'm not willing. I don't need a sign. I don't need a, a sign. Hallelujah. And finally, the last thing is in verse 8, Matthew 4 and 8. The devil took him to an exceedingly high mountain. <laughs> he dismasked himself now. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to them, all these things I'll give to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you literally fall down and worship me. Yes. He doesn't hold anything back now. 
He takes his mask off the devil here instead of just tempting him. Oh, Jesus. You can have it all. Give us ears. But you must worship me. You must live a life independent from me. In other words, what's your price? He literally was trying to buy him. I'll give you all this. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. Of, uh, all you got to do is, is bow down and worship me. When I look at this verse this morning, the devil will throw whatever he can to buy you. He'll buy you to see how he can take your praise. He, he can take your worship. He can take your walk with God. He, can, he, he wants to step in. Instead of God being first in your life, he'll throw money at you. I'll say he'll throw money at you. Satan will throw whatever he can at you to put him first in front of God. He wants to steal your, 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 your ministry. He wants to steal your worship. Steal your, your holiness. Steal whatever you're, you're a child of God. I don't know what he's throwing at you today to tell you, hey, go ahead and put a life of sin in front of you and, and I'll give you this. I'll give you riches. But I'm here to tell you my life is not for sale. Praise God. I said my life is not for sale. And he tells them there, he's literally Jesus said in one place, no man can serve two masters. In Matthew 6 and 24, he said that no man can serve two masters. He will either hate one uh, or love the other. You cannot be devoted to the one and despise it. You cannot serve God and money. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what the devil is trying to throw at you this morning, but he'll go after you. He'll throw all kinds of stuff at you. First John 2 and 16 says, For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abideth forever. Praise God. And Mark 8, 36 says, For what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing. In other words, this morning my life is not for sale, Satan. Hallelujah. Jesus told him in Matthew 4.10, he said, get out of here. Hallelujah. That's a decision that you've got to make. I'm not for sale. Yes. You can't buy my blessing with a pot of porridge. Hallelujah. You can't buy my blessing with money. You cannot buy my blessing. I don't care what you give. You cannot buy my soul because it's already been bought by the blood of the Lamb. Woo! I've been purchased. I've been redeemed. Not with perishable things, but with the precious, incorruptible, holy blood of the Lamb. And you shall worship the Lord your God and Him only shall you serve. He is above everything. I'm going to love the Lord no matter if I don't see him. No matter if my flesh is hurting. No matter what's going on. I'm going to love the Lord. I am not for sale this morning. All that is happening right now, church. If you're journeying with the church right now. If you're walking with God. God's going to take you through this area. He's going to take you through situations. Where you're going to want to doubt God, but you just believe. He's going to go after your faith. Yes. And finally, if he can buy you. There's been some that have been bought. There's been some that have given this up. Given up their ministry. Given up their calling. And man, it hurts like crazy when I see that. It hurts like crazy when I see men that had such an anointing. But somehow, they believed the lie and they gave it up. But I'm here to tell you this morning, we're not for sale. Amen. I'm going to worship the Lord. And I'm going to serve Him. Jesus said in Matthew 22, 37. You shall love the Lord your God. With all your heart, all your soul. And all your mind. And I like what it says in verse 11. Then the devil left him. And angels came. Hallelujah and ministered unto him. 
When you make a decision that you're not for sale, when you make a decision that you're going to trust the Lord, when you make a decision that I know that God's sustaining me, angels will come. I said angels will come. Right when you need them, they'll come and they'll sustain you and they'll protect you and they'll hold you and they'll empower you. You can feel the presence of God around you. You just got to make it. You just got to go through this book and let angels, let the angels of the Lord minister unto you this morning. Will you stand with me today? In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. I know the flesh saying, I don't want to fast. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know the flesh is saying, God just give you. You fasted long enough. Not my will, Lord. Not my will. But let your will. Yeah, this morning, of course, I said, you know what? Yes. Yeah, no, Rudy, you've you, you fasted. You, you know, you've been on fast since the COVID. Praise God. You've been on. Uh, you know, many of us that got sick at the beginning of the year, we've been isolated. I've been isolated now for a, going on a month. Then my wife is over there with, with Jordan and the baby, so I, I lost her again, praise God. I was telling her yesterday, man, just when I thought I had you back home and we could come together and at least hug each other, it's gone again. Thank you, sister, for helping. Thank you, brother. But it's okay. It's, it's, it's okay. Because it's good to be alone with the Lord. It's good to know that God sustains us. It's good to know that there's angels around us. You may not see them. But if you made a decision that you're not for sale. You let the Spirit of God continue. We're going to come out of this. But I'm encouraging you. Let's continue fasting. Let's continue praying. And we will see the glory of God. This all happened at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. It all happened at the beginning. Let it happen at the beginning of the year. Because then the Lord unleashed His powerful ministry and great things began to happen. And the kingdom of heaven was preached. We're going to continue doing this in the name of the Lord. You want to come up to this altar, you can come up to this altar. You want to pray where you're at, you can pray where you're at. But this morning, we're going to love the Lord. Go ahead, worship team. Make Chris create an altar right now and let's just thank the Lord. And let's just tell the Lord, I'm not, I, I am a child of God. It's not if I am. I am a child of God. I am.